this is the first part of this unit on nuclear safety. We will see first some uh, definition and element of uh, basic nuclear physics and uh, in the second third part uh, you will see some description of the main component of uh, uh, PWRs. But it is first important to give some definition of the main concept which are used here and to make a distinction between nuclear safety, radiation protection, nuclear security and industrial safety. Nuclear safety covers technical and organizational measures related to design, construction, operation and decommissioning of nuclear facilities as well as transport of radioactive substances defined to prevent accident and mitigate the consequences should they happen. Radiation protection against ionizing radiations covers regulation and processes to avoid or to reduce direct or indirect harmful impacts of radiation on peoples and environment. Nuclear security covers technical and organizational measures to prevent malevolent actions on nuclear installation as well as diversion of radioactive materials. Uh, <coughs> eventually, industrial safety covers non-nuclear risk in a nuclear facility. You will find this definition in a textbook, but it's important to know that depending on the country, these different concepts are not covering exactly the same thing. So let's begin now <coughs> with a description of the atom structure. We will use the Bohr atomic model in which an atom is modeled as a positively charged nucleus with negatively charged electron surrounding it. The nucleus itself is composed of neutrons and protons and this figure provides a schematic representation of an atom. This implies that any nucleus could be identified by the couple n, z, with n representing the number of neutrons and then repre z representing the number of protons. As an example, the hydrogen nucleus made of one neutron and one proton corresponds to the couple 1, 1. Let's define now the concept of radioactivity. Most nuclei are stable, but some are not. For some nuclei, there is a probability of spontaneous disintegration. That means that their structure suddenly change to reach a stable form with a modification of mass and hence an exchange of energy with the environment. These take the form of radiation emission, which is a characteristic of radioactive substance. An element is radioactive if it can disintegrate spontaneously with an emission of radiation. There are different types of radiation, that is, different types of particles to be uh, emitted. The first is the uh, gamma ray, which is an, e an electromagnetic radiation. A second type of radiation is, com is called beta and is composed of electrons. A third one is called alpha and alpha particles are actually uh, helium nucleus and then there are the neutrons. Let's introduce now the concept of radioactive half-life. The natural radioactivity of unstable nuclei consists in its disintegration through radioactive radiation. Let us consider a population of nuclei of uh, radioactive elements we can observe a natural decrease with time in the population due to natural radioactivity. As we can see in this figure, 
there is a decrease by half of the number of nuclei after a period of time named radioactive half-life. We are coming now to the, uh, the core of the physics of a nuclear reactor, which is uh, the fission reaction. Some heavy nuclei, like uh, uranium-235 or plutonium-239, are called fissile material, because if they are heated by a neutron, they can split in two or more products in the same time emitting a lot of energy and <coughs> a certain number of neutrons, in average 2.5. These neutrons, in turn, could hit the fissile nuclide and produce new fissions. This is a continuing process, process that we call the chain reaction. You will see now in this small video to come more detail about this concept of fission and the nuclear chain reaction and the way to control it. Neutrons play a key role in the chain reaction. When a neutron hits a nucleus of an atom, it can either just bounce off, corresponding to elastic collision, or be absorbed, in which case a capture reaction takes place frequently associated with the emission of a gamma ray. Another possibility, in the case of certain rare heavy nuclei such as uranium-235, is a fission reaction. This releases energy, and two, three or four neutrons, corresponding to 2.5 on average, and it is this that makes a chain reaction possible. If, at a given moment in time, a thousand fissions occur in the reactor core, this results in the emission of 2,500 neutrons. After a certain number of collisions, these neutrons can disappear in three ways. Fission, capture by different nuclei, or escape from the reactor, which is referred to as leakage. In what proportions? Appropriate arrangements are made to obtain exactly 1,000 fissions, when the fission rate is maintained at a constant power, around 1,450 captures and 50 escapes. This is the relative proportions of fission, capture and leakage if the chain reaction is to be exactly self-maintaining. When a thousand fissions give a thousand fissions, the multiplication factor K by which the number of fissions is multiplied from one generation to the next is equal to one, in which case the reactor is said to be critical. If the number of fissions is then made to slightly increase relative to the captures, and if the number of fissions is increased, for instance from a thousand to a thousand and one, the multiplication factor exceeds one, in which case the reactor is said to be supercritical. The power level then increases from generation to generation. If, conversely, the number of captures is made to slightly increase relative to the fissions, and if the number of fissions is decreased, for instance, from 1,000 to 998, the multiplication factor is then less than 1, in which case the reaction is said to be a subcritical, and the power level decreases. It will later be seen how it is possible to vary the multiplication factor by using the control rods or the boron present in the primary coolant to adjust the reactor power as required. For a nuclear reactor to operate, there need to be three main components. The fuel, where the uh, fission reaction will occur. Then a moderator, because the neutron emitted by the fission reaction have too high speed to be able to produce uh, another uh, fission reaction. So they have been they have been to, 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 be so slow, uh, to, to be slowed down. And the third element uh, is a coolant because the, uh, en the quantity of energy that is uh, produced by the fission reaction uh, need to be extracted and uh, to be used afterwards. And, and so these uh, three components are, are essential. The, the fuel uh, is uh, 
Acer uranium and uh, especially the uh, U235 isotope which is the only one to be uh, fissile and uh, the plutonium 239. Uranium could be used either on its uh, natural form or it could be enriched in the uh, isotope 235. And this fuel could uh, take the form of either a uh, metal, oxide, carbide, nitride, or even molten salt. The different moderators used have been graphite, deuterium, or water, the simplest one. And as uh, coolant, we can use uh, water, CO2, helium, or liquid metals such as natrium or lead. So these components could be combined in different uh, ways, and uh, they are let's give different type of uh, of, of reactors. So uh, if we categorize the uh, the reactors by uh, moderator. Uh, first moderator use was uh, heavy water uh, and the, the coolant associated with the moderator could be CO2, heavy water itself or nitrogen and in this reactor the fuel is on the oxide form. Uh, another type of moderator was graphite and uh, the coolant could be used uh, with this reactor are either air, water, CO2 or and helium and the fuel could be on different form, metal oxide or molten salt. And the most common uh, type of moderator is just water, uh, which is in the same time the coolant. The fuel is on an oxide form. And the last category uh, uh, of reactor uh, has no moderator. The, uh, uh, the coolant <coughs> Because of the uh, high density of uh, this uh, reactor, a very efficient coolant should be used, and it's usually liquid metal or a metal side, but uh, and the fuel uh, could be either in the metal oxide carbide or uh, nitride uh, form. Several types of reactor have been experienced during the research period, but we are only now going to see the main ones. So our first the type uh, of reactor use natural uranium as fuel and the first category use uh, gas as coolant and graphite as moderator. They are called Magnox, this is the type of reactors that have been built in UK or uranium natural and gas graphite in France. Another type of reactor using natural uranium has heavy water as both coolant and moderator. These reactors have been built mainly in uh, Canada and they are called CANDU. Another type of uh, industrial reactor use enriched uranium and they are the most common. We can see the gas graphite uh, which have been developed in uh, UK, the AGR, the water as coolant and graphite as moderator, this is a Russian type of reactor, the kind of reactor of Chernobyl which are called RBMK and the most uh, <coughs> common uh, type of reactor using enriched uranium that use water both as a coolant and as a moderator and among this family there are the pressurized water reactor, the boiling water reactor or the VVER which is a sort of uh, pressurized water reactor but with a sort of specific uh, design developed in, in Russia. Another type of uh, industrial reactor, which is not yet fully uh, industrial, are the fast breeder, which have no moderator and which could use liquid metal, uh, uh, mainly uh, natrium or uh, lead, and the high temperature gas cool reactor we used 
uh, helium as a, a coolant. This figure gives an evolution of the reactor types and the what we call reactor generation. It's a development along the age. The first generation was built in the 50s and, and 60s. They were early uh, prototype uh, reactor. Um, this, the second generation was designed during the 60s, 70s and it's cover the commercial power reactor already operating and in this cat category you have the, li the light water reactor I mentioned, the CANDU, the VVR and the RVMK. Okay. We are now beginning to develop and to build um, reactors that are fall falling in what we call the generation 3. They are advanced uh, light water reactor like the ABWR by General Electric or the AP600 uh, developed by Westinghouse or the European pressurized reactor developed by Arriva. Some efforts have been made to run this uh, type of reactor a little bit more economical and uh, they fall in this category of Gen 3 Plus uh, which will be built in the coming years and at the end this is this generation 4 reactor where the objective are to be highly economic to have a better safety level to minimize minimize the waste and the these type of reactors are resistant, more resistant to pro proliferation. 